Hey guys, Thrashy here. Today we have another tier list. This time we're talking about teams, sort of. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, and let's talk about it right now. Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me to create a tier list for the best teams in the game, and the issue there is the best team in the game is pretty obvious, but after the best team in the game, a lot of the second best, third best, fourth best teams, they're all variants or very close to the top team, and then there's a second team, there's many variants of that. So rather than just saying this is the top team, this is the second best team, what we're going to do is go through the tags and rate those from the best to the fifth best. So we're going to go to the top five tags in the game, and we're going to show you notable units as well as the top team in the game when we get to the best tag. So before we get into these five tags, first I want to make an honorable mention for the tag Ginyu Force. The Ginyu Force team is extremely cohesive and their synergy is awesome. The problem is all of the units are very bad, so the synergy from the team cannot make up for their lack of raw stats. Unfortunate. Okay, first up, number five. Hybrid Saiyans, they have one top tier or near top tier unit, as well as two units who are mid tier and could get better with some possible additions to the tag in the future. The real issue they have right now is they don't have a six member team that's extremely cohesive and they don't have a true top tier unit. Another major thing they're lacking is a lot of quality equipment. They do have some equipment for some of the characters, but it's not as well rounded as some of the other tags we're going to see here in a moment. Okay, number four, Frieza Force. So this team actually was not very powerful until the last couple banners. So with the addition of the Extreme, Dodoria, and Zarbon, this team has a lot more flexibility now. You don't necessarily have to use Sparking Units. Um, both of those units are Extreme. They can do reasonable damage. They have a very good stat spread for being Extreme Units. They're on par with Old School Sparking Units. They both have um, unparalleled abilities. One, Zarbon has the best vanishing gauge in the game. He's essentially ultra instinct to Zarbon. He can just dodge everything. It's insane. Dodoria has a very good swipe combo. He can pump out a lot of damage for a long period of time, which is very powerful. And the key thing here is this tag has a lot of flexibility. There are a lot of units in this tag that are at least viable in a fight. It's not a bunch of hero units that you are just bringing for their bench Z ability. As you'll notice in these notable units, there are no Ginyu Force members except for Captain Ginyu. That's not because they don't have the Frieza Force tag, it's just because you probably won't be bringing them in. But there are a ton of extra units, but the real key here is with this tag, you truly can bring six units who are essentially a rainbow team, and you can sub in units rather than just running your top three with three bench. You can switch them out depending on who your opponent is. So that's very powerful in comparison to the hybrid team where you really only have three units that you're going to run every single time. Okay, number three. Now, before I give you number three, I just want to mention that I think number two and number three on this list are interchangeable. So if you disagree and you say, oh, number three should be number two, number two should be number three, I agree with you on that. I had a very hard time placing these two, um, but I do think that the top unit in number two sort of sets them apart from number three. So if you don't have that specific unit, that's that's why I would agree with you. But let's go ahead. Number three is Android. As you can see here, Android doesn't have a lot of flexibility as to who you can really throw into that team, but it does have two absolutely top tier units and then a third unit who is mid-high tier to close to top tier. So as we get more true Android units in the near future, uh, that can be used in battle and have good stat spreads, this team is going to become even more powerful. With that being said, even in their current state, they are very viable in PvP, even at very high ranks. Okay, number two, Super Saiyan. This team, as you can see, has a lot of flexibility, there's tons of units you can bring, they all have great equipment, and more than anything, they have instant transmission Goku. He is easily one of the top two units in the game right now. He crushes most units, he can negate not one but two rising rushes, he can vanishing step multiple times if you happen to have a special move in your cards at the time you're using him. He's just an all-around great unit. Uh, not to mention the fact that if you buff his key with equipment, his key restore is so high that he can essentially combo you into oblivion. It's He's, he's an insane unit. But let's not even talk about him. Let's look at the rest of the grouping of units as a whole. Outside of him, you have six units who are extremely meta-viable, and five units who are at least mid-tier, if not higher. And with the exception of purple, you can create an almost fully rainbow team, so you can counter almost any other team color 
type disadvantage that you might run into. With that being said, our number one team is the Saiyan tag, without a doubt. So if you look at the top six units on this chart, normally in the last couple charts that I've shown you, all of the units have been thrown out randomly. These top six units are the best team in the game. The top three are generally the team that you will bring to fight with you. The next three are your bench units that you bring for Z abilities. Now, there is one alteration that some people will argue in that rather than bringing Shallot, you should instead bring Extreme Blue Goku. Now, you can do that, but I think that the EHP he adds, or Effective Health Pool, is more valuable to the team than the Z ability that the Extreme Goku brings. I think it allows for a little bit of extra leeway in case you make a small mistake here or there. You have that extra little bit of health that's spread across multiple units. But with that being said, that's I think that's really the only major argument anyone's going to have for what the best team in the game is. Outside of that, let's look at the rest of these units. You can see there's an immense amount of flexibility to this tag. You can run any color of team you want. You could essentially run multiple mono teams within this tag if you really wanted to. Um, you can counter any type of color advantage you run into. Most of these units, if not all of them, have amazing equipment they can use. They're very well rounded. And most importantly, this tag has the number one and number two best units in the game. And third place is a very distant third place so this tag by a mile crushes every other tag in my opinion this is the best tag in the game these top six units are the best team in the game and one more thing I want to note on teams in general when building your team when looking at the tag you're gonna use uh, you'll see here that this team is a green green yellow the large majority of top PvP teams now are no longer a triple color team you now have two of a single color and then two of one other color and normally the way it works is the two of the single color will be countered by one specific color so in this case green is countered by purple so you have two units who can be countered by one color so generally your one off color unit who's not the two greens you want them to be able to counter their counter so you want a yellow against a purple now it just so happens that three of the best units in the game happen to work out this way but that's normally the way you want to think about it so if you have two red units they can be countered by a blue so if you can you probably want two reds and a green. It doesn't always work out that way depending on what you're going for on your team, but that is the most viable way to set up your team. And if you guys have any questions about my tag tier list, about my top team, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I should change things, throw it down in the comments. We'll talk about it. And if you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.